Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. And a very warm welcome to you to St. Matthew's United Church on this Thanksgiving Sunday, whether you're gathered here with us in person or gathered with us in spirit. It is a delight to share this beautiful Thanksgiving Sunday with you. I'm very glad that we're able to join together in worship. I'm very glad also to be able to thank the Worship and Music Committee for their decorations this day, but to thank all of you as well, those who brought the abundant gifts of harvest that I will be bringing to Feed Nova Scotia on Tuesday morning. And I know from doing this every year that they're always immensely grateful for, uh, especially for the fresh, fr uh, fresh fruit and vegetables, the fresh produce at this time of year to be able to share with our neighbors. So thank you very much. Thank you to Worship and Music for the decorations. And I do hope that all of you will have a beautiful Thanksgiving Sunday. Are there any announcements that we ought to hear together in community? Then let us quiet ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the surpassing beauty of this day, we are grateful that we can be together when so many are forced apart. We're grateful for your many gifts, for the beauty around us, for companionship and friendship, for warmth and security. We're thankful, O oh God, for generosity, for caring, for a sense of responsibility, for those who volunteer to help others in trouble. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, O oh God, we gather and worship. We ask you to bless this time together to our use, strengthen and encourage us into the week ahead. In Christ's name, amen. Our opening Thanksgiving hymn this morning is number 516 in Voices United, but the lyrics will be on the screen. Come, ye thankful people, come.
Amen. Please be seated. Reading one of the traditional Thanksgiving readings from the book of Deuteronomy at the 26th chapter and the first verse. Now when you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard us and saw our affliction our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, that you, O oh Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, will celebrate all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. God of grace, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What kind of people do we want to be? It's sort of a big existential question, isn't it? It kind of drives us immediately into contemplating broad categories and essential virtues. And nearly always, because we're products of Western culture, we tend to construe that question and undertake its contemplation from a personal perspective rather than from a collective perspective. What kind of people do we want to be? But we instinctively, and without even realizing it perhaps, translate it for our own consideration into the personal. What kind of person do I want to be? And then we fill in the blanks. I want to be generous. I want to be kind. I want to be a good friend, a loving parent, a helpful neighbor. Or what kind of person do I want to be? I want to be settled. I want to be content. I want to be courageous, patient, grounded, grateful. And then we work at it. Being this person we want to be, trying to shape our actions, be honest with ourselves when we falter, take big breaths and try again. In the secular world, they give us New Year's resolutions and personal goals and strategic plans. In faith world, it's spiritual practice, meditation or prayer, the cycle of a weekly Sabbath, new every morning is thy love. But all these are essentially about articulating our hopes for what we'll do with this one wild and precious life as the poet Mary Oliver puts it. And then aiming for those hopes with varying degrees of energy and intent and success. Two step forward and one step back perhaps, but we chug along. We chug along. And there's no question that we chug along more effectively and far more efficiently if we pause periodically, whether annually on New Year's Eve or weekly on a Sunday morning or at the end of each day or at the turning of the seasons to remind ourselves and reground ourselves and reorient ourselves toward the answer to that question. What kind of person do I want to be? We don't have an origin myth, particularly for Thanksgiving in Canada. No pilgrims on Mayflowers pausing briefly in their building of a fearsome new Jerusalem to eat turkey with the Abenaki and make promises they weren't going to keep. The closest we might have would be Champlain and Member Two, co-hosting great feasts in what is now Annapolis Royal. But it's probably just as well that didn't gain much narrative traction. Because instead, our Thanksgiving can just be about harvest, about that pause for contemplation, can just be about gratitude and generosity and trust. What kind of people do we want to be on Thanksgiving every year we remind ourselves and reground ourselves and reorient ourselves toward this answer to that question. We want to be people who are grateful, who are generous, who are trusting, who understand that we didn't make this bounty we enjoy, that it's a gift in which ultimately we have to trust, for which ultimately we should be grateful, and with which ultimately we should be generous. And so we pause every year at harvest time. We articulate our gratitude, we reaffirm our trust, 
We struggle mightily with both when we're surrounded by so much bounty when others have nothing, and then we recommit to being generous. It's why these festivals matter. It's why these traditions take root, because we need, it's part of the human condition, we need the ritual revisitation of that question. We need the annual contemplation driving us back toward the broad categories and essential values embodied in our answers. What kind of people do we want to be? And then we hear the passage in Deuteronomy that we heard earlier, in which Moses lays out for the people of Israel the shape and traditions of that very same ritual revisitation of that question, the annual harvest festival of the first fruits, and Moses' answer is kind of interesting. Not that Moses doesn't want the people to be trusting and to be grateful and to be generous, not in the least, but at the same time, there's a bit of a twist. Because the festival of the first fruits that's described here, the commandment to present with gratitude the first fruits of the harvest, that tradition and its language, it's been associated for so long with our own Thanksgiving at harvest time that we don't always pay attention to what it actually means. And what it means is actually quite specific. It's a ritual laying down on the altar exactly as we do here as an offering of thanksgiving later to be given to people who are in need. It's a ritual of laying down on the altar not the bounty of the harvest or the extra of the harvest or the purpose-bought gift of the harvest because we care about people who are hungry and we want to share, but the very first fruits of the harvest. Those first ripe tomatoes, the first fully grown cucumbers, the first weird looking carrot we pull out of the ground, the first ripe blackberries and red apples and orange pumpkins and ears of corn, the ones that arrive first and we've been waiting for ages, the ones that arrive first and we literally have no idea if there will be any more or if something will happen or if there will, in the end, actually wind up being enough. That's the offering called forth by Moses in this ritual, the very first fruits right off the top. Because this Thanksgiving ritual, as described in Deuteronomy, it isn't about gratitude for harvest bounty. It's about gratitude there's a harvest at all. But crucially, it's even more specific than that. It's a commandment to the people to say, thank you for the harvest, when literally all they've seen is one day. And they can hope there's more to come, and it'll all be good, and there'll be more than enough. But where Moses pauses things for the people, is right off the top at the very beginning. This pause to immediately be thankful when all they've seen is one day. It's very striking, this Thanksgiving ritual as described in Deuteronomy. And it's worth remembering that it's the Thanksgiving ritual that Jesus and his disciples and his first followers were still observing annually for a a thousand years after Moses, all their lives as faithful Jews. Because what kind of people do we want to be? This would have been the Thanksgiving ritual that shaped the consciousness and faithfulness of the Judaism that Jesus himself was shaped by. This would have been the Thanksgiving ritual that shaped his fundamental idea of gratitude, that he then manifested for us as Christians in his own life and message. This was the Thanksgiving ritual with which God through Moses shaped God's people into the kind of people who say thank you for harvest right off the top 
when all there is is the first fruits, when all they've seen is one day. It's the Thanksgiving ritual that's reflected in the one prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, taught us, in which we say, give us this day our daily bread. Because what kind of people did he hope we'd be? The kind who know that just that alone, what there is today, that's enough for gratitude. It can be a challenge. It does demand trust to simply let ourselves feel gratitude for what is. When what may be is entirely uncertain and no guarantees, but that's what we're being challenged with, to want to be that kind of people, God being our helper. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, if we have let one day pass without thanking you for all your gifts, forgive us. We pause now to remember and thank you for the people we love and those who love us. May all your people, O oh God, know the blessing of friendship and care. We thank you for shelter from weather and warmth in winter. May all your people know the blessing of a safe home. We thank you for the food we eat for clean water to drink. May all your people share in the bounty of this earth. We thank you for the freedom to love and worship and live with dignity. May all your people know the blessing of security. We thank you for education and health care and literacy. May all your people know the blessing of hope. We thank you for your comfort when we're grieving, for abiding with all who are lonely, for your presence with all who are suffering illness, and pain. We thank you for volunteers and caregivers, for the comfort they offer and the kindness they share. May all your people know the blessing of love. Dear God, we thank you for the guidance and challenge of your word calling us into acts of kindness, demands for justice and healing and peace. Help us to be the people that we want to be, to live our gratitude each day with open and generous spirits, praying together when we gather, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this Thanksgiving Day is number 519 in Voices United, but the lyrics will be on the screen. Sing to the Lord of Harvest.
Amen. Please be seated. Now, as we go forth into the beauty of this day, to seek justice and to love kindness and to travel humbly together in God's path, let us go forth knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of God's Holy Spirit rest within us and lift us up this day and always. Amen. Amen.